Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the second game from the winner's match. Hustle League Season 12, Round of 16. DM White. I like that he stays like these whitish colors. I appreciate that. Consistency, also thematic. Polypoid starting the upper right-hand corner. This is a four-player map, bottom left-hand corner. We have Zeddy as the blue Zerg, which makes it hard to see his name. It says Siudadu up there, but it is uh, this is Zeddy. So... Getting back to ventral sacks at Funumanized Carapace, because I can't let it go. Like a dog with a bone sometimes with this sort of thing. Anyway, Funumanized Carapace, uh, basically it's kind of hollowish or air in the bones to lighten them up. So I guess Overlords are really heavy is their problem moving through the air. Which is why I guess they have the twitchy legs there in the back. But once they have that Funumanization, they are lighter and have hollower bones. Which you'd think would be a problem with the ventral sacks, which again, related to the gut. So I guess... Their gut ends up hollow, and that's how they sneak in the units into their gut for the drops and whatnot. But you think between phenomenized, phenomenization and and hollowed out gut that that would make them less effective at carrying things. It's like birds have hollower bones. I wonder if birds have phenomenized bones, and that's the thing. I wonder if there's something else that gets phenomenized. Whatever. Anyway, so there's the two words of the day for whatever day you guys end up seeing this. <laughs> I had to, had to get it out. We're going to see a, another 9 pool opener. I think we're going to see a 12th hatch this time. We do have an Overlord off the bat and no movements to going ahead and getting a spawning pool. Wise on a 4 player map. Forge first for white, which a little bit less optimal. But again, you got to respect early Zergling pressure. And particularly because we saw probes, or sorry, you saw a 9 pool kind of win the game for game one. And Zed, Zed, he's playing a little bit paranoid, so getting a cannon down. But th what this is going to do as a result is give Zeddy some nice economic control in the early game. Getting that 12th hatch much earlier before this expansion is going up. Preventatory cannon. Actually, the cannon and everything else going down before even there's a probe scout. Probe scout going bottom right. Drone actually going cross position as the Overlord is going bottom right. So Zeddy, perhaps looking for proxy tech, was a little bit worried something along something of those lines. Maybe some hidden tech is going to end up also as a result not able to get a scout, but at least finding where DM space in. And honestly, he's going to get a lot of information based on seeing that forge and that cannon. He's, he knows that basically it was a forge cannon opening before Nexus, which gives him a lot of options to go ahead and take a third base. Let's see if he opts to do so. Looks like he is moving out that drone to do so. White just now getting into that base. Honestly, I think it would have been worthwhile to reposition that probe to try to deny the third. Maybe across everything else. We see that spawning pool just warping in. Which is, it's kind of like if the probe makes it into the base, you just see that spawning pool finish, it's like, ah, great. It's like you, you hiked your way all the way across the map just to see a bunch of enemies spawn in your face. Drone making its way across, he realizes the situation, so he's going to go ahead and move up to try to scout that 9 o'clock. And he is going to find a hatchery about a third way finished. And has to realize, okay, I gotta, usually this puts the Protoss in a situation where it's like, mm, maybe I should do something to try to sneak back in this match. Although White has been very, very passive with his play, has played much more macro-oriented style up to this stage of things. So, comparatively, we see this gateway remaining silent, no zealot being produced just yet. Nexus just, here's the thing, that Nexus is just warping in, while this hatchery is already, two, the third hatchery is already two-thirds finished. So big, big, big economic lead. Layer being upgraded, so we're probably gonna see, I assume this is going to be three hatch Hydra. Cybernetic score warping in. White wants that additional scouting information to know what he can kind of deal with in the mid-game. Probe still alive. That single Zergling is he going to be able to block the ramp. Trying to block that ramp, block that information. That's actually going to be critical. Layer about halfway finish. And that keeps White in the dark as to what he's going up against. Going for Cybernetic score, interesting. I wonder if this was a misclick. Because he's going for Dragoon range. And weapons won. I gotta feel like that was a misclick. Because, no, he's producing a Dragoon. Wow, okay, this is an interesting build. I have not seen this before. So a single Dragoon being produced for white. I have maybe to try to put Zeddy in the dark and keep that Overlord for from going in and scouting anything additional. Unfortunately, I don't know that, I don't think that's gonna pay off. Additional hatchery being plopped down. So this is gonna be four hatch Muta? Yeah, four hatch muta, spire being plopped down. But yeah, you don't. Sony agreeing with me here. You don't need range to go ahead and get that overlord denial. 
Overlord making its way across is going to see that Cybernetic Core spinning. I don't know what to make of this, to be blunt. I do not know what to make of this. Three gateways. Maybe an attempt to get Dragoons to deal with the Mulus, but here's the thing. Just in flat, raw production, three base... Three base Muta, as far as just raw Mulus production, can still outproduce your Protoss opponent comparatively. So yeah, he wanders up. He see the, see, sees the Cybernetic Core spinning. No cancellation that I see. Maybe he's thinking weapons one. Try to dissuade there. Citadel of a Dune in the background as well. He knows he's going to lose that Overlord, but sees the Dragoon on top of everything else and these three gateways. Some Zerglings on the front. Wandering up. Surrounding that cannon. Easily going to be able to take it out. And Dragoons do not do well against Zerglings. So one Dragoon already down. The Zealot's going to get taken out momentarily. More Dragoons being produced. I like that decision making by Zeddy. He's like, okay, if you are mostly producing Dragoons, I'm just going to wander in with my Zerglings. And take out everything. So two Dragoons down. One Zergling left. There's no attack force to speak of, really. It's just going to be pure Dragoons, I guess, to follow this up, but more Zerglings being produced. There's no cannon to defend. This is the fifth hatchery. So, five Mutalisks, a bunch of Zerglings being produced. The cannon trying to warp in to follow this up, but a huge amount of Zerglings wandering across, and without the Zealots to, to provide the defense, I think that's going to be it. Weapons 1 is going to warp in, but Weapons 1 is not that great on Dragoons. They have a very slow rate of fire, comparatively. Finally, a Zealot out. Are we going to see another round of Zealots? Okay, at least another Zealot's been marked in. Templar Archives, but here's the thing. The Mutalisks, once they're out in the air, they don't need to attack the natural expansion. They don't need to dive in. They can go ahead and dive into that main. And this, and if the Dragoons bulk and open up this front door, that's going to allow the Zerglings to flood through as well. Zerglings and Mutalisks engaging. Oh, those Mutalisks. No, they're just going to go for it. Diving in here. Trying to press into this. Re-engaging that front wall. The Mutalisks re-engaging, working on that cannon right now. And Oh, I feel like Zeddy's throwing away a big advantage. Oh, he threw... Oh, man. Okay, so White might be okay here. Still, this is a continual onslaught of Zerg units. You can see all of them making their way across the mini-map. Really, if he just produces another round of Mutalisks and heads towards the main, he'll be okay. But by then, a cannon might be warped in. And the Dragoons, yeah, might be in kind of a definitive position to deal with this. White actually ahead in the overall supply count. Now he's realizing that he can just meander out that direction, but too little too late. Still has an economic advantage. He's getting additional hatchery down. But honestly, I, I feel like threw away a situation to perhaps really counter and win. He still has map control, regardless. Hydra then down. Hydra speed being upgraded. Might even be able to go still opt for a contain. Another photon cannon being warped in. There is a cannon also that back corner and this is resources that white did not want to spend that way it needs to be what Ooh, drones miss rally or maybe not drones for scouting i don't think so i think that was a miss rally hydralists making their way across this is six hydralists picking off a handful of drones not going after the cannon now going after the cannon but the cannon was able to take out one mutalisk in the interim so that's going to empty that natural expansion another mutalisk being taken down archon warped in. that's going to push the rest of those units back. Zelt leg speed has been upgraded. And they're making their way across. White, yeah, might just want to attack with what he has to see what he can do. Catch Zeddy with his pants down. Unfortunately, a lot of Hydras are warping in. So keep in mind, this is level one, weapon, level one weapons upgraded army. Is he going to just go for a counterattack? He's just going to go for a counterattack. Which, in a base trade situation, I think he will end up winning this overall. So Mutalisks on top of those, that cannon line might be able to take that natural expansion out. Now White is committed. He needs to just dive in, try to take out as much as he can, and try to even things that way. He's moving up towards the 9 o'clock. Plenty of Hydralisks right there to engage this. More Another round of Hydralisks immediately being produced. This natural expansion is certainly going to get wiped out. Might be able to take out these three hatcheries. That's a lot of stuff to be taken out. A, a Creep Colony being built and trying to rely on the Sim City amongst everything else. Some reinforcements should be able to come from the natural expansion, but this is White's only attack force, keep in mind, so he needs to basically do inflict an, a serious amount of damage with what he has. More Hydralists moving up, working on Dragoons, not focusing on that Archon. The Archon able to get right on top of everything else. Let's see if more... Re so another round of Hydralists, keep in mind, this is Hydralists right here, so they're engaging, trying to disrupt, trying to regroup and distract. More Hydralists spawning in right into the midst of battle. Dragoon being wiped out. Natural expansion's been taken out. Looks like that gateway's being worked on as well. And unfortunately, before even taking out a single hatchery, it looks like White, first of all, in the red, so not able to produce additional units, might get a hatchery, but I don't think he's going to get much more than that. 
and several of the drones actually evacuated. Never mind, a lot of the drones got taken out. So still two two zealots, and there, yeah, white calling GG. White calling GG, just didn't have enough to get it done. So Zeddy takes two games. That is going to put white into the final match. And otherwise, yeah, just playing an odd game. I don't think I've ever seen Dragoon with range upgrade to start. I'm, I'm curious what the concept was behind that, that he wanted to execute. Maybe he did not realize his opponent would... I don't... Yeah, I mean, he saw Zerg on the map. I don't know. Who knows? Gonna move, I think I'm going to do one more for the Twitch audience. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.